Humans won't save you, snarls Overseer Krath, his forked tongue flicking out in contempt as he looms over the collapsed form of a Jem'Hadar slave named Talon. On the scorching sands of Epsilon Eridani IV, Talon writhes under the onslaught of Krath's electrified whip, his blue-gray skin sizzling with each cruel lash. Talon's desperate pleas for mercy fall on deaf ears. Krath laughs, his reptilian features twisted in sadistic glee. He cracks the whip again and again, reveling in his dominance over the helpless slave. The human colony is neutral, fool. They won't risk defying the hegemony to save scum like you. You're mine forever. Once Krath moves on, Isaac springs into action. He bundles Talon's limp, lacerated form into his transport and smuggles him beyond the colony's perimeter to a secluded farmhouse. There, Isaac risks everything to nurse the critically injured Jem Hadar back to health. If discovered, Isaac will be executed and his entire colony enslaved for this brazen defiance of the hegemony's galactic order. But Isaac knows it's time for humanity to take a stand. His people may be outmatched by alien technology, but their unbreakable spirit, profound compassion, and appreciation for freedom will be their greatest weapons in the war to come. Healing Talon is only the first step in disrupting the hegemony's cruel grip on the galaxy's slave races. And if Isaac and brave humans like him have their way, Overseer Krath will soon learn just how wrong he was to discount humanity's resolve. The reckoning is coming. The door opens and a human male enters carrying a tray. Talon tenses, his heart hammering. Is this another cruel trick? A fresh torment devised by the overseers? As the long days of recovery crawl by, Talon begins to trust Isaac's motives. The human is endlessly patient, checking Talon's bandages, bringing him food and water. He listens to Talon's halting accounts of life under the hegemony's boot, without judgment or revulsion, only deep compassion. Little by little, Talon shares more, the Jem Hadar's art and music, now suppressed by the overseers, the oral histories and folk tales passed down in furtive whispers. He even tries to describe his own family before their capture, though those memories cut like shattered glass. But guilt gnaws at Talon. He is here, safe and healing, while his fellow Jem Hadar remain in bondage. Finally, he confesses his need to act to Isaac. To his shock, Isaac agrees. He introduces Talon to Dr. Amanda Nichols, another sympathetic human with a plan, an underground railroad to ferry escaped slaves to freedom. With Talon's inside knowledge and the human's resources, they can strike real blows against the hegemony. Talon clasps Isaac's hand, a fierce grin spreading across his face. He is no longer helpless chattel. He is a soldier in the fight for freedom. The overseers will learn to fear the day they spared Talon's life. The scars on his flesh may never fade, but Talon's spirit has never burned brighter. The hegemony's reckoning is coming, and he will be the spark that lights the flames of rebellion across the stars. The darkened hall stretches before Talon as he slinks through the overseer's compound, heart pounding against his ribs. This is the most daring rescue mission yet, freeing a dozen Jem Hadar from the very heart of Krath's operations. Kira follows close behind, her slight frame belying her fierce dedication. At the slave quarters, Talon makes quick work of the lock, ushering the wide-eyed Jem Hadar out into the night. They move swiftly, darting from shadow to shadow until they reach the perimeter. Sergeant Hawkins is waiting, his face grim as he hustles the rescued slaves into a concealed transport. We need to move, he growls. Caldwell's task force has been sniffing around the eastern safe houses. At the safe house, Dr. Nichols works tirelessly, tending to the escaped slaves' wounds and malnutrition. Talon watches as she comforts a trembling adolescent male, her voice soft and soothing. These humans never cease to amaze him with their compassion. Isaac pulls Talon aside, his expression grave. Vandermeer's getting nervous, he says quietly. The hegemony is putting pressure on the colony about the missing slaves. He can't ignore it much longer. Talon clenches his fists, the old scars from Krath's whip twinging. They've come too far to back down now. In the following days, the Underground Railroad adapts, moving the escaped slaves to increasingly remote locations. Kira proves invaluable, her quick mind absorbing the humans' lessons on blending in. She becomes Talon's shadow, 
always ready with a keen observation or a gentle word for a frightened rescuee. But the noose is tightening. Caldwell's task force raids a safe house mere hours after the slaves are evacuated, the near miss rattling the railroad supporters. Hawkins reports increased security at the checkpoints, making smuggling missions more challenging. Talon pours over maps with Isaac and Amanda, searching for new routes and safe houses. They cannot falter now, not when so many lives hang in the balance. One evening, as Talon rests in his hidden quarters, Kira approaches him tentatively. I've been thinking, she says, her voice soft but determined. We can't keep reacting to Caldwell and the hegemony. We need to take the fight to them. As Kira outlines her audacious plan, Talon feels a swell of pride and anticipation. The hegemony believes the Jem'Hadar are broken, their spirits crushed under the weight of generations of oppression. But they are wrong. The fire of rebellion is kindling in Jem'Hadar hearts across the planet, the dream of freedom taking root in secret whispers and furtive glances. And with the help of their human allies, Talon and Kira will fan that flame into a blaze that will consume the overseer's tyranny once and for all. The reckoning is coming, and the Jem Hadar will be its heralds. The piercing wail of sirens shattered the night's stillness. Talon jolted awake, his heart racing as the safe house door burst open. Isaac's face was a mask of urgency. Chaos erupted as panicked Jem Hadar scrambled for exits. Talon grabbed Kira's arm, pulling her towards the hidden tunnel. But it was too late. The floor shook as stun grenades detonated, filling the air with acrid smoke. Down! Talon yelled, shoving Kira to the ground as armored figures swarmed in. A barrage of stun bolts crackled through the air. Talon felt a searing pain in his side before darkness claimed him. He awoke in a stark cell, the harsh lights burning his eyes. Kira huddled in the corner, her face bruised but defiant. Through the transparent barrier, Talon saw other captured Jem Hadar in adjacent cells. The Underground Railroad's carefully crafted secrecy had been shattered in a single night. Days blurred together in captivity. Talon's enhanced hearing picked up snatches of heated arguments from the guards. Overseer Krath's name was mentioned often, along with words like property and consequences. The colony was in turmoil. One evening, the door to their cell block slid open. Amanda slipped inside, her lab coat concealing a bundle. Amanda's eyes flashed. We won't. Isaac and Hawkins are planning something. Be ready. She vanished as quickly as she'd come, leaving Talon and Kira to share the precious supplies with the other prisoners. The next day, alarms blared throughout the facility. Gunfire erupted in the corridors. Talon pressed against the barrier, straining to see. Suddenly, Isaac appeared, blood streaking his face as he punched in the door code. Move, he shouted, tossing Talon a plasma rifle. We don't have much time. Talon hefted the weapon, its familiar weight igniting a fire in his veins. He turned to the other cells, freeing his fellow Jem Hadar. Their eyes blazed with newfound purpose as they armed themselves. The prison became a war zone as Talon led the charge towards freedom. Guards fell before their onslaught, unprepared for the ferocity of the Jem Hadar's attack. They fought their way to the exit, where Hawkins waited with transports. Go! Isaac yelled as they piled in. We've got safe houses deep in the wilderness. We can't let them destroy everything you've built, Talon said, his voice thick with dedication. He turned to the gathered Jem Hadar, their eyes fixed on him. We were bred for battle. It's time we use those skills against our true enemy. A ripple of agreement passed through the crowd. Kira stepped forward, her chin raised high. We'll fight by your side, she declared, for our freedom and for those who risked everything to help us. Isaac clapped Talon on the shoulder, a grim smile on his face. Well then, my friend, let's plan our first strike. As they bent over the maps, plotting their assault on the hegemony's military assets, Talon felt a surge of fierce pride. The overseers had created the Jem Hadar to be the perfect soldiers. Now that perfection would be turned against them. The coming battle would decide not just their fate, but the future of human-alien relations in this sector of space. Talon's grip tightened on his weapon. Whatever the cost, they would not fail. Talon's eyes swept across the makeshift war room, 
taking in the grim faces of his fellow commanders. The air thrummed with tension as they finalized their bold strategy. We strike at dawn, he declared, his voice low and resolute. Three teams. Isaac, you'll lead the assault on their fuel depot. Kira, take out their communications array. I'll hit their primary hangar. As the others dispersed to brief their squads, Isaac pulled Talon aside. This is insanity, he muttered. We're outnumbered, outgunned. And out of options, Talon finished. He clasped Isaac's shoulder, but not out of hope. A soft whump, then darkness as the hangar's systems went dark. Talon vaulted the wall, his team right behind him. They moved through the confusion like ghosts, disabling ships and planting explosives. An alarm blared, cutting through the chaos. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as hegemony guards rallied. Talon ducked behind a half-assembled fighter, returning fire. The acrid smell of ozone filled his nostrils as his shots found their marks. Charges set, Kira's voice crackled over the comm. Exfiltrating now. Same here, Isaac reported, his transmission punctuated by distant explosions. Fuel depot is history. Talon allowed himself a grim smile. Fall back to the rendezvous point. We're done here. As they sprinted for extraction, the night sky lit up with the simultaneous detonation of their targets. Talon felt a fierce satisfaction. They'd bloodied the hegemony's nose. But the victory was short-lived. Within days, Krath's reinforcements arrived, including the dreaded Valrath shock troops. The real battle had only just begun. The colony's outskirts became a hellscape of trenches and barricades. Talon crouched in a hastily dug foxhole, the burned-out husk of a transport ship looming overhead. Beside him, a human militia member, barely more than a boy, clutched his rifle with white-knuckled hands. A bone-rattling roar split the air. Talon's eyes widened as he recognized the sound. Vow wrath, assault carrier, he shouted. Brace for impact! The ground shook as the massive vehicle crested a nearby hill, disgorging waves of heavily armored troops. Their energy shields flickered as they advanced, shrugging off conventional fire. All units, concentrate fire, Isaac's voice rang out. A hail of plasma bolts and repurposed mining lasers tore into the now vulnerable shock troops, but more kept coming, their inhuman shrieks chilling the blood. For hours the battle raged. Talon lost track of time, moving from position to position, shoring up weak points in the line. His world narrowed to the next target the next threat. A deafening explosion rocked the battlefield. Through the smoke, Talon saw the flaming wreckage of the Valrath carrier. A cheer went up from the human lines. We did it! Kira's voice was triumphant over the comm. Their forward base is destroyed! As the remaining Valrath fell back in disarray, Talon allowed himself a moment of hope. They'd bought themselves some time, but the war was far from finished. Days later, Talon stood on the bridge of a captured hegemony corvette, preparing for his most daring mission yet. He met Isaac's worried gaze. I have to do this, Talon said softly. We need to know what Krath is planning. The infiltration of Krath's flagship was a nightmare of close calls and silent kills. Talon's heart pounded as he accessed a command terminal, downloading critical intelligence. His blood ran cold as he decrypted the data. Alarms blared. Talon's cover was blown. He fought his way to the escape pods, barely making it out alive. As New Haven's leadership digested the grim news, Vandermeer made his decision. Evacuate all non-essential personnel, he ordered, but we stand and fight. The hegemony armada arrived like an oncoming storm, blotting out the stars. Talon stood on the command deck of New Haven's last remaining capital ship, watching as the civilian transports made their desperate break for open space. The void erupted in fire as the battle was joined. New Haven's defenders fought with the fury of the desperate, unleashing every weapon and dirty trick they could muster. But the hegemony's numbers were overwhelming. On the planet's surface, Isaac coordinated the ground defense. Ordinary citizens took up arms, determined to buy time for the evacuation ships. The streets ran red as Krath's troops advanced. Your reckoning has come, Talon snarled, his finger hovering over the firing controls. Balance. Talon's finger slammed down on the firing controls. 
The New Haven warship unleashed its full arsenal, a barrage of plasma torpedoes and beam weapons that tore into Kraft's flagship. Explosions blossomed along its hull as shields failed and armor buckled. But the overseer's vessel wasn't going down without a fight. Return fire raked across Talon's ship, breaching the hull and venting atmosphere. Alarm shrieked as systems failed. Reroute all power to weapons, Talon shouted, gripping the command console as the deck shuddered beneath him. We finish this now. A triumphant roar went up from the crew as the enemy vessel began to break apart. But their celebration was short-lived. A final salvo from Krath's guns found its mark, slamming into the New Haven ship's reactor core. Abandon ship, Talon bellowed, helping wounded crew members to the escape pods. As he launched the final pod, he caught a glimpse of Krath's flagship erupting in a massive fireball. Talon's pod plummeted through New Haven's atmosphere, the colony's surface a patchwork of fire and ruin below. With a bone-jarring impact, they crashed in what had once been the outskirts of the main settlement. Talon! Isaac's voice crackled over his battered comm unit. By the stars, you made it! We need you at the emergency command post immediately! What's our status? he asked, scanning the readouts. Critical, Isaac replied. We've driven them off, but at a terrible cost. Half the colony is in ruins. Casualties are... high. Talon's mind raced. Isaac, start coordinating rescue efforts. Dr. Nichols, do what you can for the wounded. I'll put out a call for aid. Over the next hours, Talon worked tirelessly, recording emergency transmissions and dispatching them to every human colony within range. As he worked, reports trickled in from across New Haven. The list of the dead and missing grew longer with each passing minute. Just as despair threatened to overwhelm him, the long-range sensors lit up. Ships were emerging from hyperspace, dozens of them. Talon held his breath as the transmission came through. A grizzled human captain appeared on the screen. New Haven, this is Captain Reeves of the Andromeda. We received your distress call. We're here to help. But the real shock came moments later. A massive gem hotter warship dropped out of warp, dwarfing the human vessels. Talon tensed, fearing a new threat. Then the ship's commander appeared on screen. Another liberated gem hadar. Brothers, the commander said, his voice filled with conviction. We stand with you against the hegemony's tyranny. Your fight is our fight. In the days that followed, New Haven became a hive of activity. Talon worked alongside Isaac and Kira, coordinating the influx of aid and volunteers. The once devastated colony slowly began to transform into something new, a symbol of unity and defiance against oppression. As the first new structures rose from the ashes, Talon stood atop a hillside overlooking the rebuilding efforts. Kira approached, her face etched with drive. You're the one who brought us this far, Kira interrupted. Human, Jem Hadar, and now a dozen other species, they all look to you. We have a long way to go, he said softly. Months passed, and New Haven transformed. The once devastated colony bustled with activity as beings of all species worked to rebuild and fortify their new home. Talon stood atop the newly constructed command center, surveying the sprawling settlement below. Talon nodded, steeling himself. The weight of his new title still felt strange, but he pushed aside his doubts. There was work to be done. Report, he said, his voice carrying the authority of command. Isaac stepped forward, manipulating the hologram. We've secured the neighboring systems, he began, but hegemony forces are regrouping. They're hitting slave populations hard in retaliation. Talon's teeth clenched. Then we take them. Kira, status on Operation Shatterpoint? A young human woman, her eyes burning with intensity, leaned forward. My teams are in position. We can hit three major hegemony facilities simultaneously, cripple their supply lines. Do it, Talon ordered, and bring back as many liberated slaves as you can. We need every able body. As the meeting progressed, plans were laid and strategies honed. Talon felt a fierce pride in this unlikely alliance they'd forged. Human ingenuity combined with Jem'Hadar tactical knowledge and the unique skills of a dozen other races. It was their greatest strength against the monolithic hegemony. Weeks later, Talon stood on the bridge of the revolutionary flagship, 
watching as Kira's strike force returned. The calm crackled to life. Mission accomplished, Supreme Commander, Kira's voice rang out, triumphant despite her obvious exhaustion. We've got over 5,000 liberated slaves aboard, and the hegemony won't be using those facilities again anytime soon. A cheer went up from the bridge crew. Talon allowed himself a small smile before issuing orders to process and care for the new arrivals. In his quarters that night, Talon raged silently at the brutality. He thought of his own years in chains, of the countless beings still suffering under hegemony rule. His willpower hardened like durasteel. The next morning, he called an emergency session of the War Council. We need a game changer, Talon declared, something to break their technological advantage. As if in answer to his words, a human scientist was escorted into the room. The newcomer's eyes darted nervously, but persistence was etched on his face. Talon's eyes widened. This could be the edge they needed. Days later, Chief Engineer Kyra Ivanova led a daring raid on a hegemony supply depot. Talon monitored the operation from the command center, tension coiling in his gut. We're in, Kira's voice crackled over the comm. Accessing their mainframe now. By the stars, Kira breathed. We hit the jackpot. Full data on their slave processing, logistics, everything. Talon's fist clenched in victory. With this intelligence, they could cripple the hegemony's ability to replenish their slave workforce. Talon stood before the assembled strike force, a sea of determined faces staring back at him. Humans, Jem'Hadar, and a dozen other species, all united in purpose. Today, we strike at the heart of our oppressors, Talon declared, his voice carrying across the hangar bay. Today, we show the galaxy that no tyrant is beyond our reach. The battle for Vasek Prime raged for days. Talon coordinated from the flagship, guiding his forces through the chaos. Kira led the ground assault, her troops fighting street by street to reach the overseer's palace. Finally, the news Talon had been waiting for came through. As word of the victory spread, uprisings ignited across hegemony space. The chains of oppression began to crack and splinter. But Talon knew the war was a long way to go. Reports came in of hegemony forces conscripting their own civilian populations, desperately trying to shore up their losses. Kira, he said, turning to his most trusted commander, it's time to strike at their administrative core, Torgau. Days later, Talon watched from the bridge of the revolutionary flagship as Kira's assault force descended on Torgau. The planet's defenses crumbled under the combined might of human ingenuity and Jem'Hadar tactics. Sir, a communications officer called out, we're receiving a data stream from the surface. Talon's breath caught as the footage played across the main view screen. Kira's troops, a mix of humans and liberated aliens, stormed a massive labor camp. Emaciated figures of a dozen species stumbled into the light, blinking in disbelief at their rescuers. Broadcast this on all frequencies, Talon ordered. Let the galaxy see the truth of hegemony rule. Talon staggered, his vision blurring as he left the war room. Isaac caught him before he hit the floor. Poison, Talon gasped, recognizing the telltale symptoms. The rations... As he fought for consciousness, Talon heard Isaac barking orders for medical assistance. The last thing he saw before darkness took him was the horror on his friend's face. Talon awoke days later in the med bay, Dr. Nichols hovering over him with a concerned frown. You're lucky to be alive, she said. The assassin's aim was off. The dose meant for Isaac would have killed you instantly. Anger and commitment hardened in Talon's chest. The hegemony would pay for this. In the following weeks, as Talon recovered, reports flooded in of a new hegemony bioweapon targeting Jem'Hadar genomes. The Revolutionary Council debated endlessly, divided on how to respond. We've been too cautious, he declared. It's time to end this. We strike at the hegemony capital itself. Murmurs of dissent rippled through the room. Talon himself was taken aback by the audacity of the plan. But before he could speak, a small figure pushed through the crowd. Rena, a Dalathi woman rescued from Vasek Prime, stood before the council. Her voice shook as she recounted the horrors she'd endured at the hands of overseer guards. By the time she finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Talon met Isaac's gaze and nodded. 
Prepare the fleet, he ordered. We're going to Vorash. As capital ships traded broadsides in high orbit, Talon led a strike team of elite Jem'Hadar commandos to the surface. They fought their way through the sprawling Grand Citadel, the seat of hegemony power for millennia. In the end, Talon found himself face to face with Overseer Krath, his former master. The Vorash noble's eyes widened in recognition and fear. Talon's fist connected with Krath's jaw, sending him sprawling. He stood over the Overseer, every fiber of his being screaming for vengeance, but he stayed his hand. Your reign of terror is over, Talon said coldly. You'll face justice for your crimes. With the hegemony leadership captured, the remaining oligarchs had no choice but to surrender. The galaxy watched in awe as the brutal system that had enslaved countless beings for millennia crumbled in a matter of days. On New Haven, Talon stood before a sea of faces, human, Jem'Hadar, and a dozen other species. All eyes were on him as he raised his hand for silence. For too long the galaxy suffered under hegemony oppression, he began. But today we stand united. Today we are free. The crowd erupted in deafening cheers. Talon's voice rose above the din, carried across a hundred worlds by subspace relays. As the celebrations raged on, Talon knew the real work was just beginning. Rebuilding a shattered galaxy would take time. But for the first time in his life, he dared to hope for a future without chains. Talon's words echoed across the galaxy, igniting hope in countless hearts. But as the initial euphoria faded, the enormity of the task ahead became clear. Supreme Commander, we have a situation. Talon strode onto the bridge of the flagship, tension visible in the set of his shoulders. The main view screen flickered to life, displaying a hellscape of burning buildings and clashing mobs. The Dalathi Purges and Valrath Purification Movement Isaac explained grimly. They've turned on each other, fighting for control of the planet's resources. Talon's heart made. Contact Kira. Her fleet is closest. Tell her to intervene with whatever force necessary. Talon nodded, his mind racing. This can't happen again. We need a unified authority, something to bind us all together. In the days that followed, Talon worked tirelessly. He reached out to representatives from every liberated world extending an invitation to an unprecedented galactic summit on New Haven. We stand at a crossroads, he began, his voice carrying to every corner of the room. The hegemony is defeated, but unless we act now, we risk replacing one tyranny with a thousand petty dictatorships. For days, debates raged. Talon mediated heated arguments between former rivals, guiding discussions toward common ground. Slowly, painfully, a framework emerged for an interstellar republic. As the final draft of the Constitution was being prepared, alarms blared through New Haven's command center. Talon rushed to the war room, finding Isaac hunched over a console. The assault on the nebula was swift and brutal. Kira's elite forces struck like lightning, catching the hegemony remnant off guard. But as they closed in on the enemy flagship, disaster struck. Talon watched in horror as Kira's fighters spiraled out of control, trailing smoke and debris. The comms crackled with static, then silence. As Kira fought for her life in the medbay, something unexpected happened. Bitter adversaries from a dozen worlds, united in outrage at the attack, set aside their differences. The last hegemony holdouts surrendered or were brought to justice. We cannot build a future on vengeance, he told the outraged crowd. Only by breaking the cycle can we truly move forward. Months passed. The fledgling Republic took its first tentative steps. On a hundred worlds, former slaves and masters worked side by side, rebuilding shattered cities and healing fractured societies. In the presidential chambers on New Haven, Talon stood by the window, gazing out at the stars. A soft chime announced a visitor. Enter, he called. The door slid open, revealing a familiar face. Kira, still pale but standing tall, saluted crisply. Reporting for duty, Mr. President, she said, a hint of a smile on her lips. Talon felt a weight lift from his shoulders. There was still so much to do, so many challenges ahead. But looking at Kira, seeing the drive in her eyes, he knew they would face them together. Talon turned to face Kira, 
a weary smile tugging at his lips. It's good to have you back, Fleet Admiral. The Senate approved your promotion yesterday, Talon explained. We need someone to oversee the Republic's unified military, and there's no one I trust more. Before Kira could respond, a holographic display flickered to life on Talon's desk. A map of Republic space materialized, dotted with pulsing red markers. Sir? Isaac's voice crackled through the comm. We have reports of unrest on multiple worlds. Talon's face hardened as he studied the display. Show me. The hologram zoomed in on a sprawling metropolis. Crowds surged through the streets, many brandishing makeshift weapons. Buildings burned in the background. Talon nodded grimly. And they're not alone. We're seeing similar outbreaks on a dozen worlds. Kira saluted crisply. Understood, Mr. President. As she strode from the room, Talon sank into his chair, the weight of his office pressing down on him. He toggled the comm. Isaac, get me the education minister. We need to accelerate those reform programs. Not everyone agreed. Senator Vex, a fiery Delathi, smacked his fist on the podium. And what of justice? The hegemony butchered millions. They deserve to suffer as we suffered. I understand your pain, he said softly. But if we give in to hatred, we become no better than our oppressors. We must be better. The debate raged on, but in the end, Talon's measured approach prevailed. Across Republic space, former overseers found themselves laboring alongside their one-time slaves, rebuilding the very worlds they had once tyrannized. On Navara Prime, Talon watched as a group of hegemony elites, stripped of their finery, worked to clear rubble from a bombed-out hospital. Nearby, a team of engineers, a mix of humans, Jem Hadar, and half a dozen other species, poured over blueprints for the new medical center. It's working, Kira said, materializing at his side. Slowly, but it's working. Talon nodded, allowing himself a moment of hope. But the moment was short-lived. His calm chimed urgently. Who's responsible, he demanded. He turned to Kira, his eyes blazing with purpose. Find them, he ordered, whatever it takes. Kira nodded, her expression mirroring his own. As she strode away, barking orders into her calm, Talon gazed out at the city below. The fledgling Republic faced its greatest test yet, and he knew the choices he made in the coming days would shape the course of galactic history. The hunt was on. The purification movement, Isaac said, his voice tight. A coalition of former hegemony elites and radicalized slaves. They're not just fighting us. They want to eradicate entire species. Before Talon could respond, alarms blared throughout the command center. A frantic communications officer called out, Mr. President, we've lost contact with the Novara shipyards. The main view screen flickered to life, showing a scene of devastation. The once proud orbital facilities were now a tangle of twisted metal and floating debris. Fires raged unchecked in the zero-gravity environment, consuming oxygen and lives with equal veracity. Civilian centers on the planet's surface are reporting multiple explosions, Kira reported, her voice clipped and professional, despite the horror unfolding before them. Suicide bombers, death toll, still climbing. Talon's fists clenched at his sides. This ends now, he growled. General Kravik! The grizzled gem hotter materialized on a nearby hollow projector, snapping to attention. Sir! Assemble your best units. I want these purification extremists found and neutralized. No mercy for those who target civilians. Today we faced an attack not just on our people, but on the very ideals that bind us together, he declared. The purification movement seeks to drag us back into the darkness of hatred and division. We will not let them succeed. Kravich's forces scored several decisive victories in the following weeks. Purifier cells were rooted out and destroyed. Their leadership went to ground, but the threat seemed to be receding. Then came the communique that changed everything. Talon burst onto the bridge of the flagship, his eyes blazing. Tell me it's not true, he demanded. Admiral Kira, he barked into his comm. Get to the quarantine site, now. Multiple exposures, Kira reported, her voice ragged. We've lost good people today, and more are infected. We need a cure, and fast. The backlash was immediate. 
protesters filled the streets of a hundred worlds, decrying the lockdowns as draconian overreach. But their voices were soon drowned out by a more insidious threat. The assassinations began without warning. Key civilian leaders fell to precision strikes, sowing chaos and paranoia throughout the Republic. In a single bloody day, the Speaker of the Senate and three planetary governors were gunned down. Talon's response was swift and absolute. By the authority vested in me as president, I hereby declare a state of martial law, he announced. All law enforcement agencies are now under direct military control. The riots began that very night. On New Terra, the capital world, Talon watched from his office as fires bloomed across the sprawling metropolis. The calm chimed, and a familiar face appeared on the screen. Isaac, Talon said, surprised. What can I do for you? Engage with them, Isaac urged. Find out what drives them to such extremes. Surely diplomacy... Enough! Talon pounded his fist on the desk. I will not negotiate with mass murderers. The time for talk is over. This is the president, he said, his voice cold and determined. Initiate Operation Firestorm. We're taking the fight to the purifiers. As treatment centers sprang up across Republic space, Talon prepared to address the people once more. He stood before the cameras, acutely aware of the weight of history on his shoulders. Citizens of the Republic, he began, his voice firm and unwavering. We face a grave threat, not just to our lives, but to the very idea of a united galaxy. The purification movement would see us torn apart by fear and hatred. They believe our diversity is a weakness. They are wrong. Our strength lies in our differences, in the tapestry of cultures and species that make up this grand experiment we call the Interstellar Republic. And it is that strength we must draw upon now. As Talon continued his address, vowing to wage a just but uncompromising war against extremism, tensions simmered beneath the surface of Republic society. The unity forged in the crucible of revolution was being tested as never before. In the shadows, the remnants of the purification movement regrouped, planning their next move. And on a hundred worlds, citizens and soldiers alike wondered, would the Republic weather this storm, or would the dream of a free and united galaxy crumble in the face of fear? Talon's eyes burned with commitment as he strode into the secure command center. Holograms flickered to life, displaying real-time tactical data from across Republic space. Status report, he barked. General Kravich's gravelly voice filled the room. The new measures are yielding results, Mr. President. We've detained over 500 suspected purifier sympathizers in the past week alone. Talon nodded curtly. And the interrogations? Mr. President, we have confirmation. The purifiers have acquired prototype trans-slipstream molecular disruptors. Talon's blood ran cold. How? Thane's image flickered betraying the secure channel's instability. We infiltrated their base on Rokakor. My team barely made it out alive. As Thane's report unfolded, detailing the devastating potential of the weapons, Talon's perseverance hardened. He toggled the comm, connecting to his inner circle. Initiate emergency protocol Omega, he ordered. Effective immediately, I'm assuming direct control of all Republic military assets. In the Senate chambers, chaos erupted as news of Talon's decree spread. This is tyranny, Senator Vex roared, his scales flushing crimson with rage. We fought to overthrow one dictator, only to be saddled with another. Before the debate could escalate further, a squad of Kravik's elite troopers burst into the chamber. Their leader's voice rang out, amplified by his helmet's external speakers. As the politicians were escorted out, some more forcefully than others, a familiar face pushed through the crowd. Isaac Murray, the human ambassador who had once stood beside Talon, now found himself at odds with his old friend. This isn't right, Talon, Isaac pleaded, facing down the expressionless visors of the security team. We can't abandon our principles, not even in the name of security. Talon's voice crackled through the trooper's comms. I'm sorry, old friend, but I can't allow anyone to stand in the way of what must be done. Take him into custody. As Isaac was led away in restraints, the seeds of rebellion began to take root. On a dozen worlds, protests erupted into violent clashes with Kravik's forces. 
The night sky over New Haven blazed with the light of orbital bombardments as the military moved to quell uprisings on distant colonies. In her lab, Dr. Nichols watched the news feeds with growing horror. She keyed her private comm channel, reaching out to her protege. Alara, what's happening out there? This isn't what we fought for. Director Thane's voice was cold, detached. We're doing what's necessary to preserve the Republic, Doctor. Sometimes that means making hard choices. As the call ended, Nichols slumped in her chair, the weight of her role in creating this new order pressing down upon her. This can't go on, she muttered, coming to a decision. She turned to her XO. Prep my shuttle. It's time I had a talk with our dear president. As Kira's shuttle streaked towards New Haven, Talon stood before a bank of screens in his fortified command center. Each display showed a different facet of the growing crisis. Riots, military standoffs, the aftermath of the Tempest raid on Sigma Origae. His comm chimed, and General Kravitz's hologram appeared. Sir, we've detected chatter suggesting a possible coup attempt. As Kravik saluted and vanished, Talon turned back to the screens. He keyed the broadcast system, his face appearing on every view screen across Republic space. As Talon's words echoed across a fractured nation, the future of the Republic hung in the balance. The dream of a free and united galaxy seemed to be slipping away, replaced by a nightmare of paranoia and oppression. The echoes of Talon's broadcast faded, leaving a deafening silence across the Republic. On New Haven, the streets erupted in chaos as protesters clashed with Kravik's security forces. Smoke billowed from burning vehicles, and the air crackled with the sound of energy weapons. Admiral Kira's shuttle touched down on the presidential compound's landing pad. She strode purposefully towards Talon's command center, her face a mask of grit. As she entered, she found the president hunched over a tactical display, his eyes blazing with intensity. Mr. President, Kira began, her voice taut. We need to talk about the current situation. Talon looked up, his expression hardening. If you're here to question my methods, Admiral, save your breath. I'm doing what needs to be done to preserve the Republic. By trampling on the very ideals we fought for? Kira countered, her fist clenching at her sides. Sir, we're losing the people's trust. The military is fracturing. We need to reconsider our approach. Mr. President, we have a situation on Altair Prime. Armed militias identifying themselves as the Liberty Movement have seized control of the planetary defense grid. Talon's eyes narrowed. Crush them, General. Use whatever means necessary. Kira watched in growing horror as Kravik's forces descended on Altair Prime. The battle was swift and brutal. Tempest Special Forces deployed nerve toxins, indiscriminately killing both militia members and civilians. As reports of the carnage flooded in, Kira felt her drive crumbling. On New Haven, Isaac Murray stood before a sea of protesters, his voice carrying over the din. We cannot allow fear to dictate our actions. The Republic was founded on principles of freedom and democracy. We must return to those ideals. In the midst of the turmoil, a new threat emerged. Purifier ships appeared in orbit around dozens of Republic worlds, their weapons charged. Before anyone could react, molecular disruptors detonated, reducing entire cities to atomic dust. Millions perished in an instant. Admiral, I'm ordering a full deployment of our forces. We will hunt down every last purifier and their sympathizers. No mercy. With a decisive motion, she cut the transmission. Turning to her crew, she saw the same conflict and purpose mirrored in their eyes. As the Defiance and its loyalist fleet broke formation, Kira knew there was no going back. The Republic she had sworn to protect was gone. In its place, a new future beckoned, uncertain, fragile, but offering a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. Evasive maneuvers, Kira barked. Get us clear of the gravity well. As New Haven shrank behind them, the comm crackled with urgent transmissions. Dozens of ships were breaking formation, joining Kira's impromptu exodus. On the main view screen, Ambassador Murray's face appeared, haggard but determined. Kira nodded grimly. We'll do what we can. Set course for Meridian. Weeks passed in a blur of desperate flights and narrowly avoided confrontations. As more worlds declared for what was now being called the Commonwealth, Talon's forces struck back with increasing brutality. 
On Meridian, Kira stood before a hastily assembled council of military leaders and civilian representatives. The chamber buzzed with tension and exhaustion. No sooner had the words left her mouth than alarms blared throughout the complex. General Kravich's face appeared on the main display, twisted with rage. Traitors and insurgents, he snarled. You will all burn for this betrayal. The transmission cut off abruptly as the first orbital strikes hit. The chamber shook, dust raining from the ceiling. All ships, scramble, Kira shouted into her comm. Get our people off-world now. Across Commonwealth space, similar scenes played out. Kravik's forces descended like a hammer, indiscriminately targeting military and civilian targets alike. On a dozen worlds, black-armored squads dragged people from their homes, filling hastily constructed prison camps. Murray worked tirelessly, coordinating evacuations amid the chaos. His voice was hoarse from countless pleas for aid and ceasefire negotiations. We need neutral mediators, he insisted during a secure call with Kira. This slaughter has to stop. Before Kira could respond, a priority alert flashed across her screen. A new player had entered the game. Admiral Kira, he said without preamble, I have critical intelligence. Talon's inner circle has revived the Terminus project. Kira's blood ran cold. Impossible. That was dismantled after the hegemony fell. As Valkyrie's words sank in, another crisis erupted. The Defiance rocked violently as proximity alarms screamed. On Thanos VII, Kira's fleet found itself caught in a deadly crossfire. It's a trap, her tactical officer shouted. Multiple hostiles closing fast. The battle was swift and brutal. Kira watched in horror as ship after ship winked out of existence on her tactical display. A sickly green mist began to spread through nearby sectors. The virus, Valkran breathed. They're testing it. By the time they fought free of the ambush, Kira's fleet was in tatters. The Defiance limped away, its hull scarred and breached in a dozen places. Before either could speak, the world exploded in blinding light. An ion pulse ripped through the area, frying every piece of technology in range. As Kira struggled to her feet, disoriented, a new threat emerged from the chaos. Purifier dropships screamed overhead, disgorging waves of fanatical soldiers. In the melee that followed, Kira found herself fighting back-to-back -back with Talon and Murray, old grievances momentarily forgotten in the face of a common enemy. As Krath's forces closed in, Kira realized with sickening clarity that they had all gravely underestimated the true threat. The petty squabbles of Republic and Commonwealth paled in comparison to the Purifier's genocidal ambitions. Captured and disarmed, Kira, Talon, and Murray were roughly shoved aboard a Purifier transport. As the ship lifted off, Krath's triumphant voice echoed through the hold. We need to work together. The Republic, the Commonwealth, none of it matters now. This is Admiral Valkran. All hands, prepare for immediate extraction. The hold's door exploded inward. Praetorian guards stormed in, their armor scorched and pitted. Move! Their leader barked, tossing weapons to the stunned prisoners. We're out of time, Kira snapped. We have to go now. They sprinted for the docking umbilical, Valkran's men providing covering fire. As they crossed onto the Praetorian vessel, Krath's laughter echoed behind them. Days blurred together as their ragtag fleet regrouped. Kira stood on the bridge of the Defiance, surrounded by a patchwork of Allied ships. Republic cruisers flew in formation with Commonwealth frigates, while Praetorian dreadnoughts provided a protective screen. Talon's face appeared on the main display, haggard but determined. We've captured several purifier scientists. I'm bringing in a specialist to assist with interrogation. The specialist turned out to be Anara a Dilathi woman with haunted eyes and a brilliance that seemed to crackle around her. Kira watched uneasily as Talon explained the arrangement, freedom in exchange for decoding the Terminus virus. Meanwhile, the reports flooding in grew increasingly dire. Entire systems went dark, overwhelmed by waves of grotesque mutation. Kira's stomach churned as she reviewed footage from Atacon Beta, once a thriving agri-world, now a wasteland of writhing biomass. It's not perfect. Inara warned. The retrovirus could mutate, become something even worse. We need more time, more safeguards. 
Kira watched in growing horror as Tempest teams dispersed the cure across infected worlds. For a moment it seemed to work. The tide of Terminus began to recede. Then came the screams. The comms erupted with panic transmissions. The retrovirus had mutated, just as Inara had feared. A new plague, the perdition strain, spread like wildfire. Caught between twin horrors, the fragile alliance began to fracture. Kira received word of lynchings, of Kravik's dominators slaughtering entire settlements in the name of containment. She turned to Talon, expecting to see remorse, but found only cold resolution. Kira stared at the plans for the biomass incinerating warheads, revulsion rising in her throat. No, she said, her voice steely. I won't be party to this. She turned to her crew, seeing the same willpower mirrored in their eyes. Prepare for immediate departure. We're done following orders that will doom us all. As the Defiance and its loyalist fleet broke formation once more, Kira knew the real battle was only beginning. Against the dual plagues of Terminus and Perdition, with former allies now enemies, the fate of countless worlds hung in the balance. Admiral, we're receiving encoded transmissions from New Haven. Kira's eyebrows furrowed. Put it through. This is Dr. Reeves at New Haven Central. The Perdition virus has... It's mutated. We're calling it the Omega strain. Nothing's working. It's... The transmission cut out abruptly. Murray's fingers flew across the console, trying to reestablish the link. Kira's comm chirped, displaying an incoming priority alert from Talon's command. Kira, you need to see this. The display split, showing tactical readouts of New Haven. Talon's voice continued, cold and detached. I'm initiating Firestorm protocols. It's the only way to contain Omega. Kira's blood ran cold. You can't. There are still millions of... It's done. Kira's fist slammed against the bulkhead. You bastard! She whirled to face her crew, seeing shock and revulsion mirrored in their eyes. This ends now. Set course for Meridian. We're breaking with Talon's regime. Evasive action, Kira barked. The shuttle jinked and rolled, but a lucky shot clipped its wing. As they plummeted toward the surface, Kira glimpsed a familiar silhouette through the cockpit window. Isaac's diplomatic vessel, caught in the same ambush. A towering figure strode through the smoke. Krath's mask gleamed in the firelight as he regarded his prisoners. Kira struggled against her captors, but it was futile. As they were marched toward a waiting purifier dropship, she locked eyes with Isaac. A silent understanding passed between them. Their actions in the coming hours would determine the fate of billions. Aboard Talon's flagship, alarms blared. The tactical display showed a rapidly expanding sea of red, purifier beacons, each representing a world fallen to Omega contamination. Talon's fist clenched as reports flooded in, Commonwealth governors defecting, embracing his doctrine of merciless suppression, Kravich's dominators enacting brutal containment measures, and always, always the death toll climbing. A priority alert flashed. Talon's blood ran cold as he read Krath's ultimatum. Kira and Isaac's lives hung in the balance, weighed against billions more. He turned to Inara, desperation etched in every line of his face. Tell me you have something. Anything. The Dalathi scientist shook her head, eyes haunted. The mutation rate, it's beyond anything we've seen. At this point, complete biomass sterilization may be our only option. Talon's shoulders sagged under the weight of an impossible choice. As he gazed out at the stars, he knew his next decision would shape the very future of humanity. Talon's gaze swept across the tactical display, a sea of red indicators pulsing in with grim finality. He turned to Inara, who, who stood workstation, her fingers flying across new holographic interfaces. So Tell me you have something, he said, his voice low and urgent. Inara looked up, her eyes rimmed with exhaustion. Perhaps. It's risky, but it may be our only option left. She brought up a complex molecular diagram, explaining her theory of combining purifier viral data with human nanotechnology. As she spoke, Talon's expression shifted from skepticism to unyielding commitment. A purification matrix, he murmured, studying the projections. Total genetic rewrite of all biological life. Talon's teeth clenched. And what's your alternative? 
Let the Omega strain consume everything? Before Murray could respond, an alert flashed on the main screen. Krath's masked visage appeared, his voice dripping with malice. Behold the fruits of your resistance, he growled. Talon's fists clenched at his sides. For a moment, the weight of command seemed to crush him. Then his eyes hardened. Inara, how soon can you have the Matrix ready? With the right resources, days, maybe hours. Talon nodded. Do it. Murray, begin civilian evacuations. We're initiating decontamination protocols. As his officers scrambled to comply, Talon turned back to the viewport. Beyond the reinforced plascrete, stars glittered coldly in the void. Somewhere out there, Kira and Isaac faced their executioners. I'm sorry, he whispered, knowing they couldn't hear. But there's no other way. On the bridge of his flagship, Talon watched the final countdown commence. Decontamination fleets hung in low orbit over a dozen worlds, poised to seed the purification matrix. A priority transmission cut through the tense silence. Krath's masked face filled the view screen once more, this time flanked by Kira and Isaac. Their eyes were wide with terror as purifier executioners raised cruel barbed implements. Talon met Kira's gaze through the screen. In that moment, volumes passed between them without a word. She gave an almost imperceptible nod. As Krath's howl of rage filled the bridge, Talon watched the first nanoswarms descend. Blue-white light blossomed across planetary surfaces as the purification matrix took hold. Within moments, all organic matter began to transmute into an inert, self-perpetuating quarantine field. When he opened them again, his gaze was steady. The purification matrix spread inexorably onward, reshaping the very building blocks of life. Whether salvation or damnation, the die was cast. Humanity's future, if it still had one, would be forever changed. The purification matrix descended upon world after world, a relentless tide of blue-white light. Talon watched from the command deck as entire planets transformed before his eyes. Verdant forests and sprawling cities alike crumbled into crystalline plains, their surfaces cracking like parched earth. Status report, he demanded his voice hoarse from hours of issuing commands. Inara stepped forward, her eyes wide. The Matrix, it's reaching them. The image crystallized, transforming into a macabre tableau. Kira, Isaac, Krath, and his zealots, all petrified in an instant, trapped in eternal stasis. Talon's fists clenched at his sides. How many? he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Murray swallowed hard before responding. Conservative estimates put casualties in the trillions, sir. We're still gathering data, but... Sir, the only survivors we can confirm are in sealed biodomes and decontaminated installations. Everything else, it's gone. Silence fell over the command deck. Talon moved to the viewport, staring out at the transformed worlds, where once there had been a tapestry of lights and colors, now there was only a uniform, glassy sheen. Days passed in a haze of data analysis and damage assessment. Talon barely slept, subsisting on stims and sheer force of will. When Inara requested an urgent meeting, he knew the news wouldn't be good. The Dalathi scientist's usually immaculate appearance was disheveled. Dark circles under her eyes. Commander, she began, her voice trembling. I've completed my analysis of the Matrix's behavior patterns. Talon braced himself. Go on. It's... It's not stopping. The programming is too robust, too single-minded. It will continue to replicate and spread until... Until what? Inara met his gaze, her eyes filled with despair. Until the entire galaxy is converted. We've created a berserker swarm with no off switch. What about reversing the process? He asked, already knowing the answer. As Inara left to compile the data, Talon turned back to the viewport. The stars seemed colder now more distant. He thought of the trillions of lives snuffed out in an instant, of worlds rendered sterile and silent. The void predictably did not answer. Make no mistake, he concluded, his voice steady despite the turmoil within. This is an extinction-level event, but humanity has faced extinction before, and we've survived. We will do so again. Murray stepped forward, his expression grim. Sir, with all due respect, how? 
we're talking about a handful of isolated habitats with finite resources. Even if we ration aggressively, we're looking at a few generations at most before... The announcement was met with a chorus of protests. Valkrin, his scarred face twisted in anger, spoke the loudest. You can't be serious. We've already lost too many good people to those fanatics. Talon held up a hand, silencing the objections. I understand your concerns, but those archives may hold the key to reversing this catastrophe. It's a risk we have to take. As the meeting adjourned, Talon felt the weight of countless lives on his shoulders. He had made the call that brought them to this point. Now, he could only hope that his gamble would pay off, and that the price already paid hadn't been too high. Talon's gamble paid off, but at a terrible cost. The Purifier archives yielded their secrets, unlocking the potential to reverse the Matrix's devastation. Yet as Inara poured over the data, her face grew increasingly grim. Talon watched from the command deck as the initial nanoswarms descended. Blue-white light, reminiscent of the Matrix's original deployment, suffused the dome. Within hours, the first tentative shoots of green emerged from the sterile ground. Containment breach, Inara shouted. The Matrix, it's still active, evolving. Talon's eyes hardened as he watched the dome's interior transform into a nightmarish landscape of writhing, cancerous vegetation. Sterilize it, he ordered, his voice cold. Now! Valkrin's teams moved in, clad in hazmat gear. They fought a losing battle against the rapidly mutating biohazard. Talon watched in horror as soldier after soldier succumbed, their suits rupturing as the contamination spread. We have no choice, Talon said his finger hovering over the launch controls. We can't let it spread. The orbital strike reduced the dome and everything within to ash. Years of work, obliterated in an instant. But it was only the beginning. Across Vakran and other dead worlds, the pattern repeated. Moments of hope as life took hold, followed by devastating setbacks as the Matrix reasserted itself. Each time, Talon's response grew more ruthless, more desperate. This can't go on, Murray argued during a tense strategy session. We're becoming no better than the purifiers. The schism deepened. As Talon's hardliners pushed for ever more extreme measures, Murray's moderates began to quietly organize. The last fragile unity of the survivors began to fracture. Then came the day Kira emerged from stasis. Her face was a roadmap of scars, her eyes haunted by the horrors she'd endured but her voice rang with conviction as she addressed the assembled survivors. We've detected a new strain, she said, her voice quavering. It's, it's like nothing we've seen before. Our countermeasures are useless. Talon watched in mute horror as the feeds from the remaining Genesis sites went dark, one by one. The last hope for a restored Earth vanished in a tide of corrupted nanites and twisted biomass. As the habitat erupted into chaos, Talon met Kira's gaze across the crowded chamber. In that moment, despite their differences, a silent understanding passed between them. Whatever came next, survival would require them to find common ground, or perish in the storm that was about to break. Talon and Kira's uneasy truce crystallized in the face of this new threat. As the habitat's alarms blared, they rushed to Inara's lab, where the scientist hunched over banks of holographic displays. Show us, Talon commanded, his voice tight. Inara's trembling fingers manipulated the data streams, revealing microscopic horrors. The new strain writhed and pulsed, devouring everything in its path with terrifying efficiency. Useless, Inara finished, her eyes haunted. This variant adapts faster than anything we've seen. It's as if the Matrix has achieved a twisted form of sentience. Silence fell as the implications sank in. Then Inara straightened, a desperate light in her eyes. There might be a way, but it's... extreme. She outlined her plan. Reverse engineering the Matrix's foundational code to unravel its core replication directives. As she spoke, Talon's frown deepened. Kira nodded grimly. Most were lost in the conflicts. Where would we even start? Hours later, Talon stood on the bridge of the Tempest flagship staring at the looming shape on the screen. A massive Dyson megastructure hung in the void, its surface pitted and scarred by eons of cosmic bombardment. Talon's eyes met Kira's. No words were needed. 
they both knew the risks and the potential reward. Prep the infiltration team, Talon ordered. We're going in. The descent into the megastructure's depths was a harrowing journey. Tempest operatives navigated treacherous, half-collapsed passageways as the entire construct groaned and shuddered around them. We're out of time, Kira shouted over the comms. Get what you can and get out. Back on the Citadel habitat, Inara's team worked feverishly to decrypt the alien codices. Days bled into weeks as they pieced together the fragments of knowledge. But it was the final entries that held the key. Buried within layers of arcane cybernetic protocols lay the foundation of the Matrix's code sequencing. Talon leaned over her shoulder, his brow furrowed. Can you use this? Inara nodded slowly. Yes, but the cost will be high. She laid out her plan, each word falling like a hammer blow. To initiate a system-wide matrix shutdown, they would need to digitize sentient biometrics on an unprecedented scale. Valkrin exploded in fury. You're talking about weaponizing the very essence of those we've lost. It's the only way, Inara insisted. We need a cyber-viral introvector potent enough to subvert the entire system. The next phase was a race against time. As Inara's team refined their shutdown protocols, Tempest operatives scoured the frozen worlds. Remote data harvesters worked tirelessly, amassing digitized bioscans from every known sapient matrix trapped within the quarantine field. Cybernetic storage matrices filled to capacity, each one a testament to countless lives lost. In secret, synthetic infiltrators slipped into compromised matrix nodes, planting logic bombs like seeds of destruction. As the final preparations were made, Talon addressed the assembled survivors. The faces that looked back at him were etched with fear, hope, and unyielding commitment. Kira stepped forward, standing shoulder to shoulder with her once enemy. Whatever comes next, she added, we face it together. As conversion fields deteriorated, Talon authorized the final step. A coordinated volley of neutrino catalysts streaked across the stars. Their genocidal potency now turned to a nobler purpose. Talon watched the sensors with nervous excitement as the initial readings came in. Primitive bacteria, then simple plant life, then... A cheer went up from the command deck, but Talon's eyes remained fixed on the screens. The battle was not nearly finished. The reborn worlds were harsh, unforgiving places. And somewhere out there, remnants of the Matrix might still lurk, waiting to reassert themselves. The real work, he knew, was just beginning. Impressive, isn't it? Kira's voice startled him from his reverie. She stood beside him, her eyes fixed on the horizon where alien flora swayed in the breeze. Talon nodded. And terrifying. We've given life back to the galaxy, but now we have to ensure it doesn't tear itself apart again. As Talon took the podium, a hush fell over the assembly. We stand at a crossroads, he began, his voice steady. The choices we make here will shape the future of our galaxy for generations to come. The debates that followed were fierce. Commonwealth moderates argued for leniency, while Republic hardliners demanded harsh justice for collaborators. Accusations flew, tempers flared, and more than once Talon feared violence would erupt. It was Inara who finally broke the deadlock. She stepped forward, her slight frame belying the authority in her voice. We cannot undo the past, she said, her eyes sweeping the room. But we can shape the future. I propose a path of tempered progress. Her plan was bold. Conditional amnesty for reformed civilian populations, coupled with strict oversight and demilitarization. As she outlined the details, Talon watched the faces of the delegates. Some nodded in agreement, others frowned, but all listened intently. The charter that emerged was far from perfect, but it was a start. As the delegates filed out, Talon caught Kira's eye. She gave him a slight nod. They both knew the real work was just beginning. We can't let this continue, Valkrin growled, his fists clenched at his sides. Talon turned to Kira. You know what needs to be done. She nodded grimly. We'll root them out, but it won't be pretty. As Kira and Valkrin led their forces against the hardliner insurgents, Murray focused on the equally challenging task of reintegration. On a dozen worlds, Tense standoffs played out between victims and pardoned collaborators. It's a powder keg, Murray reported during a strategy session. 
One spark could set the whole thing ablaze. Talon rubbed his temples, feeling the beginnings of a headache. Keep at it. We need to prove that coexistence is possible. The resurrection chambers hummed with activity as another group of perjurants emerged, blinking in the soft light. Talon watched from behind a one-way observation screen, his expression a mixture of awe and apprehension. Remarkable, Inara breathed beside him. Their neural patterns are stabilizing faster than we anticipated. Before Talon could respond, the chamber's comm system crackled to life. Commander! Murray's voice was tight with urgency. We need you in the council chamber. Now! Minutes later, Talon strode into a room thick with tension. Representatives from a dozen factions faced each other across the circular table, their voices raised in heated debate. Silence! Talon's command cut through the din. As the room quieted, he turned to Murray. Report. The ambassador's face was grim. The situation is deteriorating rapidly, sir. We're seeing increased polarization among the governing councils. The reformists, led by Inara, are pushing for more lenient policies towards former hegemony territories. But the hardliners... He trailed off, glancing towards a group of stern-faced officials. One of them, a grizzled veteran named Jarek, spoke up. We can't afford to coddle our enemies, Commander. The hegemony and their collaborators must be held accountable for their crimes. The debate raged on, with Murray desperately trying to mediate between the factions. Talon listened intently, weighing each argument. He could see the merit in both positions, the need for justice, balanced against the pragmatic reality of rebuilding a shattered galaxy. As the council session dragged into its third hour, an aide burst into the room. Commander, we've just received word from the Tempest Strike team. They found something on the derelict Forge world. All eyes turned to the hollow display as it flickered to life, revealing a cavernous chamber filled with row upon row of glowing stasis pods. The Purifier Genesis Archives, Inara whispered, her eyes wide. It's real. The revelation sent shockwaves through the council. For some, it represented a chance at true redemption, the ability to restore countless lost civilizations. Others saw only danger, the potential to reignite ancient conflicts and destabilize the fragile peace they'd fought so hard to achieve. The vote was close, but in the end, the moderates prevailed. Talon gave the order to proceed, even as he braced himself for the backlash he knew was coming. A sudden explosion rocked the facility, alarms blaring. Talon's comm unit crackled to life with Kira's urgent voice. We're under attack, as Rathi insurgents have breached the perimeter. As Talon raced towards the command center, his mind raced. The attacks were becoming bolder, more coordinated. Something had changed. Talon's fist clenched as he reviewed the forensic data. A rogue element, hidden within their own ranks, working to undermine everything they'd fought for. The implications were staggering. He turned to Kira, his eyes hard. Assemble a strike team. We need to root out this threat before it's too late. Admiral Kira leaned in, her face hardening as she processed the information. Hegemony tech? But how? We destroyed their infrastructure. Inara's voice crackled over the comm. Commander, I've traced their command hub. It's a mobile fortress in the Zarmina Rift, constructed from salvaged Dyson megastructures. Hours later, Kira's fleet emerged from hyperspace, confronted by a sprawling alien construct. Massive energy fields shimmered around the fortress, crackling with malevolent purpose. All ships, prepare for interdiction, Kira barked. These are bioweapon fields. One breach could be catastrophic. On the bridge of her flagship, Kira gripped the command rail. Push through! We can't let them keep this foothold! Vex's team redoubled their efforts, finally breaching the central chamber. There, amid banks of pulsing biotech, stood a figure Talon had believed long dead. Hecaton, Vex growled, leveling his weapon at the former Dominator leader. Back on the command ship, Inara's frantic voice filled the bridge. Talon, we have a problem. The Eidolon Directive. They've already initiated resurrection protocols for the Hierarchiketh. Talon felt a chill run down his spine. The purifier bioweapons? But they were eradicated eons ago. Not anymore, Inara replied, her voice shaking. And that's not the worst of it. The plague seeds? They're active. 
gestating in new exogalactic vectors. Kira's voice was tight with awe-inspiring dread. Talon, we're picking up movement, something big. Talon's fist clenched as he watched the holographic display. Status report, he barked. Admiral Kira's voice crackled through the comm. It's bad, Commander. The High Rock Keth are overrunning our defense lines faster than we can establish them. We're losing entire systems by the hour. Inara burst into the command center, her eyes wild. The xenogenomic codes, they're unlike anything we've ever seen. The High Rock Keth are mutating at an unprecedented rate, adapting to every countermeasure we throw at them. Talon nodded grimly. Mobilize everything we have and get me a direct link to the Tempest Strike teams. Across the frontier, Allied fleets engaged the Hyrak Keth Vanguard. Kira's flagship, the Adamant, led the charge. Energy weapons lanced out, carving chunks from the biohorror's flesh. But for every wound inflicted, the creatures regenerated tenfold. Intensify forward firepower, Kira shouted as a Hyrak Keth tendril lashed out, crushing a nearby cruiser. We can't let them breach the Zeta Corridor. On a dozen worlds, populations dissolved into biomass as the Hyrak Keth consumed all in their path. Screams echoed through city streets as civilians fled the advancing tide of horror. In his lab, Murray worked feverishly, analyzing tissue samples. The mutation rate is off the charts, he muttered. We need something more potent than conventional weapons. Inara's holocom flickered to life. I might have a solution, she said, her voice tight with tension. But you're not going to like it. We're out of options, Talon interjected, his expression grim. Prepare the nanoplague. We'll deal with the consequences later. Deep in Hyrakiketh territory, Vex and his Tempest team fought their way through writhing corridors of living flesh. We're approaching the command nexus, he reported, his voice strained. Heavy resistance. Vex gritted his teeth, initiating neural override protocols. Stand by. We're in, Vex's voice crackled through the comm. But we can't hold it for long. Whatever you're going to do, do it now. Talon's eyebrows furrowed. This was the moment of truth. With a single command, he could unleash a force that might protect the universe, or doom it to an even darker fate. He took a deep breath and gave the order. Talon's voice cut through the tense silence. Initiate Operation Rebirth. Inara's fingers flew across her console. Uploading Xenoposis protocols to Vex's team. Initiating Neural Override Sequence. On the front lines, Vex gritted his teeth as waves of alien data flooded his neural implants. Accessing Prime Archon's synaptic nexus. It's... resisting. Hold steady, Talon's voice crackled through the comm. We only get one shot at this. In orbit above a dozen worlds, Kira's fleets engaged in a brutal war of attrition. Bioships the size of small moons erupted in spectacular explosions as concentrated fire tore through their regenerating hulls. Heraketh replication rate is slowing, an officer reported, but we're losing ships faster than we can replace them. Kira's mind focused. Push forward. We need to buy Inara more time. On the command deck, Murray coordinated a massive logistical operation. Evacuation transports are away, secure havens at 62% capacity and rising. Talon nodded grimly. And if this fails, those havens become humanity's last bastions. On a dozen screens, they watched as entire ecosystems underwent rapid, chaotic transformations. Forests pulsed with alien bioluminescence. Oceans churned with newly evolved life forms. Vex's strained voice came through the comm. The Archon, it's trying to reassert control. We can't hold it much longer. The universe seemed to hold its breath. For a moment, all was still. Then chaos erupted. Alarms blared as sensors overloaded with conflicting data. The very fabric of reality seemed to warp and twist. What's happening? Talon demanded. As the dust settled, they stared in awe at the transformed galaxy before them. The High Rock Keth threat was gone, but in its place. My God, Murray breathed, what have we created? Talon's eyes narrowed as he surveyed the new galactic landscape. The true consequences of their actions were only just beginning to unfold. Unfold. 
The transformed galaxy pulsed with alien energies, a testament to the audacious gambit they had just unleashed. Inara's fingers flew across her console, her face a mask of concentration. I've isolated significant portions of the Hyrak Keth Primarchon's Codex, initiating rewrite protocols now. Suddenly, alarms blared. Inara's eyes widened in shock. The Archon, it's retaliating! Uplink stability critical, an officer reported, voice tight with strain. We're losing control. Talon's face hardened. He keyed in a series of commands, bringing up a heavily encrypted interface. Initiating Armageddon contingency, he announced grimly. Talon shook him off. We're out of options. If we don't act now, the Hyraketh will consume the entire galaxy. But at what cost? Murray pleaded. This is cosmic damnation. We'll be no better than the monsters we're fighting. Ignoring Murray's protests, Talon opened a comm channel to the fleet. Admiral Kira, initiate final offensive. Buy us as much time as you can. Across the star-studded void, Kira's voice crackled through. Understood, Commander. May the cosmos have mercy on us all. The Allied Armada surged forward, newly constructed ships filled with improvised purifier sonic disruptors. Energy lanced between vessels as they clashed with the writhing biomass of the Hyrak Keth horde. As the conflict reached its fever pitch, an unexpected transmission cut through the chaos. A gravelly voice, tinged with an otherworldly resonance, filled the command center. Talon's eyes narrowed. A purifier archon? How do we know this isn't a trick? The voice continued, undeterred. The Hyrak Keth Prime Archon has a weakness, a genetic kill code seeded by its ancient creators. I can provide you with the encrypted data needed to activate it. Inara's fingers hovered over her console. Commander, if this is legitimate... Talon nodded sharply. Do it. We've got nothing left to lose. On the command deck, exhausted cheers broke out as sensor readings confirmed the dissipation of the existential threat. But the victory was bittersweet. The cost had been catastrophic. Talon stared at the galactic map, his expression grim. Entire sectors lay in ruins, gutted of life. The scars left by this conflict would take eons to heal. As the dust settled, Inara initiated genomic remediation protocols. It would be a long, arduous process to restore what had been lost. But they had survived. Against all challenges, they had prevailed. Talon turned to face his war-weary team. The real work was just beginning. Rebuilding a shattered galaxy would require every ounce of their strength and ingenuity. And lurking beneath the surface, the specter of future conflict loomed. The uneasy alliance with Sath Kethic's purifier dissidents was a powder keg waiting to ignite. But for now, they had earned a moment of respite. As Talon gazed out at the stars, he allowed himself a fleeting sense of hope. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. The galaxy's transformation had come at a steep price. As Talon surveyed the aftermath, his thoughts turned to the countless lives lost and worlds forever altered. But amid the devastation, a new chapter was unfolding. Years passed. The Allied forces, once united against the Hyrak Keth threat, found themselves facing an insidious enemy that had lurked in the shadows for millennia, the galactic slave trade. The turning point came when Zyrax and Jasper's forces launched a bold assault on Nexus Prime, the last major slave processing world. Talon watched the battle unfold via holographic projections his breath caught in his throat as the resistance ships engaged the slaver fleet. Admiral Kira, Talon called out. Can we offer any support? Kira's hologram flickered to life. Negative, Commander. We're stretched thin, maintaining stability in the sectors affected by the Hyrak Keth crisis. This is their fight. In the days that followed, the once mighty slave empires crumbled. Colonial governors, sensing the shift in power, surrendered en masse. Across subjugated worlds, oppressed populations rose up against their weakened overlords. On Altair, a human colony world, Talon oversaw the establishment of an interstellar alliance tribunal. As representatives from dozens of species convened, the weight of history hung heavy in the air. Krogak was the first to stand trial. The alien warlord sneered at the proceedings, his voice dripping with contempt as he addressed the court. You upstart vermin, he snarled 
mandibles clicking in agitation. How dare you interfere with the natural order? Our empire has stood for millennia. Your rebellion is but a fleeting aberration. I stand before you not as a nameless chattel, but as Zyrax of the Kitherin people, he declared, eyes locked on his former tormentor. Your reign of terror ends today, Krogak. The galaxy will know your crimes. As Zyrax recounted the horrors he had endured, Talon saw the faces of the tribunal members harden. Even the most stoic among them couldn't mask their revulsion at the catalog of atrocities. As the prisoners were led away, their furious protests echoing through the halls, Talon approached Zyrax and Jasper. Zyrax clasped Talon's hand, his alien features arranged in what passed for a smile. We couldn't have done it without our human allies, he said, turning to Jasper. You saved me, my friend. You saved us all. We need more supplies, Jasper muttered, studying a holographic inventory projection. At this rate, we'll be out of critical resources within a week. A nearby terminal chimed, displaying an incoming transmission from Zyrax. The Ketherin's face appeared, his expression grim. Jasper, we've got trouble. Riots have broken out on New Dawn Gamma. The local security forces are overwhelmed. Jasper's teeth gritted. I'll dispatch a peacekeeping unit immediately. But this is just treating the symptom. We need a more comprehensive solution. Not everyone welcomed the changes. In a converted cargo bay, serving as a makeshift town hall, angry voices rose in protest. Is this freedom? A multi-limbed Zarthian bellowed. We trade one form of slavery for another. Alara stood firm, her voice cutting through the din. We face extinction if we do not act decisively. These measures ensure our survival. In time, as we stabilize, restrictions will ease. Zyrax dove for cover, barking orders into his comm unit. Flanking team, move in. We need to take that compound intact. The battle raged for hours, but in the end... Zyrax's troops secured victory. As they combed through the captured base, a junior officer approached with startling news. Sir, we've found evidence of recent communications with Krogak. He's alive and coordinating loyalist forces from a hidden stronghold. Zyrax's fists clenched. The war, it seemed, was just getting started. Before Jasper could respond, alarms blared throughout the complex. Emergency channels crackled to life, bringing grim tidings. Loyalist forces had launched a devastating attack on New Dawn Delta, leaving hundreds dead and critical infrastructure in ruins. In the stunned silence that followed, Jasper knew that the path forward had just become far more treacherous. The delicate balance between justice and reconciliation, order and freedom, would be tested like never before. We stand at a crossroads, he began, his voice carrying to every corner of the vast chamber. For too long, our peoples have known only oppression and fear. Today, we forge a new path. Pretty words, he said, voice like grinding glass. But how can we trust the very species that enslaved us for generations? Jasper stepped forward, his eyes scanning the crowd. Trust is earned, not given. We don't ask you to forget the past, but to work with us to build a better future. The formation of the Federation was just the beginning. In the New Dawn colonies, Minister Alara grappled with mounting crises. On New Dawn Gamma, she stood before a crowd of hungry refugees, her scales dulled with exhaustion. Her words were cut off as a rock sailed through the air, narrowly missing her head. Within moments, the gathered crowd erupted into chaos. Zyrax's militia moved in, energy batons crackling as they forced the rioters back. Zyrax's eyes narrowed. And what would you have us do? Let them tear each other apart? As the death toll mounted, Alara's voice cut through the din. Enough is enough. We must strike back. Show these terrorists no mercy. Jasper shook his head. Escalation will only breed more violence. We need to... Krogak, Zyrax breathed, his fist clenching. The slaver loyalist's voice filled the room, dripping with contempt. Your pitiful federation crumbles, and you debate ethics? Pathetic. As Krogak outlined his ultimatum, Jasper felt the weight of countless lives on his shoulders. The choice before them was impossible. Surrender to tyranny or risk everything on a desperate gamble. In the tense silence that followed, all eyes turned to Admiral Talon. 
The hardened veteran's face was unreadable as he considered their options. The command center fell silent as Krogak's transmission cut off. Talon's weathered face was grim as he outlined his plan. Jasper recoiled. Genocide? That's unconscionable! It may be our only option, Alara countered, her scales rippling with agitation. Before the argument could escalate, alarms blared. A technician's voice rang out, panicked. Multiple Korthrox strikes detected. They're deploying some kind of biological agent. Screens lit up with horrifying images. On world after world, clouds of sickly green mist billowed through streets and buildings. Where it touched, flesh blackened and sloughed off bone. Alara's voice crackled over the comms from New Dawn Gamma. We're under attack. The defenses are... Her words cut off in a burst of static. Days later, confirmation came of her death. Morale plummeted across Federation space. In a private conference room, Jasper paced restlessly. We need to strike back, he said, his voice hard. Talon's right. The Terminus virus may be our only hope. Zyrax's alien features contorted in anguish. And become no better than the slavers? There must be another way. There isn't time, Talon growled. Every moment we hesitate, more die. The debate raged for hours. In the end, Zyrax's refusal to deploy Terminus split the Federation. Fleets turned on each other as moderates and hardliners clashed. Zyrax's dwindling forces fought a desperate holding action, trading space for time. But time was running out. In a makeshift war room, Jasper approached Zyrax, his eyes burning with willpower. I have a plan, he said. It's risky, but it might be our last chance. Zyrax hesitated, then nodded. Make it happen. Under Talon's tactical guidance, a strike team infiltrated a ruined arcology. They fought through automated defenses and lingering pockets of contagion, nearly perishing before securing corrupted viral samples. Back at their hidden base, geneticists worked feverishly to analyze the Terminus strain. What they discovered sent shockwaves through the command staff. The procedure began, Jasper's body racked with pain as machines extracted and recombined genetic material. But before they could complete the process, proximity alarms blared. Korthrox, strike team incoming, a sensor operator shouted. The base erupted in chaos. As Federation troops scrambled to defend, Krogak's elite commandos breached the perimeter. Jasper, still connected to whirring medical apparatus, saw a Korthrox warrior take aim. He lunged, shoving Zyrax clear of the plasma bolt. Searing pain erupted in his chest. As Federation forces rallied and drove back the attackers, Zyrax cradled his fallen friend. His eyes glazed over, and he went still. Zyrax's keening cry of anguish echoed through the ravaged base. But as the sound faded, his persistence hardened. They had the prototype cure. Now they just needed to find a way to deploy it before Krogak's forces finished what they'd started. The final battle for the galaxy's soul loomed on the horizon. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.